because the damages caused by jadi satu isu yang we were locked down for 84 days never thought of using it SPP ni ialah a protection so I think very immediate and very obvious we are basically now number one in Malaysia it's just a situation that happened during the pandemic yang covid-19 Hi, welcome to the post-pandemic recovery dialogues. Imagine that the life support machine has to be assembled from 700 pieces of accessory from all over the world, then you realize how important is logistics. Today with us is Mr. Anil Gatnam, the Managing Director of DHL e-commerce solutions and Managing Director of Lala Move, Mr. Ong Seng Long. Okay, Shen Long, let's yeah. uh, tell us the nature of your business. Uh, we know that in logistics business, there are different types of businesses. Mm. So I think uh, for Lala Move, um, it's, it's a bit of a newer economic model. Right? So we run on a gig economy model similar to Uber and Grab, uh, where the, the way it works is that we don't have any fixed assets. You know, we don't hire any uh, full-time riders and drivers. It's purely gig economy, come when you want to work, be your own boss model, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, but we only play, of course, in the logistics space across multiple uh, verticals. We have your two-wheel, mm -hmm. we have your bikes, we have your cars, we do vans, 4 by 4s and lorries as well. And so uh, we're, pretty, we're a pretty new company here in Malaysia. We've only been around for about two years. And so, but we're seeing fantastic growth. And I think the, I think the Malaysian market especially is really starting to open up to this sort of uh, logistics model that we currently have. What are the services with. you provide? So um, our basic service and probably our largest service is, is bike delivery, mm. right? Um, and, and it's very specifically, uh, especially for bikes, it's, mm. it's usually very specifically last mile, mm. right? So whether you want to del deliver flowers or cakes or food. It's a same day delivery service. Same day, on demand, mm. uh, whenever you want it. You can schedule it as well. You can have it uh, mm. for tomorrow or a week from now. That mm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But we we focus uh, primarily on same day. And that cuts across all our, our, all our verticals, whether it's bike, car, 4x4, van, mm. lorry. Uh, you want it, you press a button and it'll be there within well, for bikes within 10 minutes and for, Ooh, you know, nice, cars nice. and uh, for, sorry, for vans and lorries might take a little bit longer because, mm -hmm. you know, they've been like, mm -hmm. surprisingly spread out. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you'll definitely be there within half an hour to an hour. So, mm -hmm. so that's usually our SLAs that we get. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about DHL? I know. Well, uh, uh, YB, uh, DHL, as many people would know, is a global mm -hmm. brand. Yes. Uh, we are part of a, a bigger group called Deutsche Post DHL. Mm -hmm. So I, rep I represent DHL e-commerce solutions. Mm -hmm. And we are the youngest uh, business unit under Deutsche Post, which mm -hmm. was specifically created mm -hmm. across the globe for focusing on the e-commerce sector, mm -hmm. both for cross-border delivery and for domestic delivery. Mm. So we entered Malaysia in 2017. Mm. And ever since, you know, we have uh, spread ourselves to provide next day and uh, uh, next day plus one delivery across West Malaysia. So we cover the entire West Malaysia, 99.9% .9 of the zip codes mm. and 60% of uh, East Malaysia for domestic delivery. Mm -hmm. When the lockdown was announced, mm. MCO came in, mm. uh, international borders are closed yeah. and planes are grounded. Hmm. And certainly, it affects uh, uh, DHL business. Okay. And what are the steps they taken by you uh, to overcome all these problems? Yeah. So, uh, I think uh, many companies have gone through that, but uh, mm. when the borders started closing, the first thing that started happening is mm. uh, many of the passenger flights got impacted. Okay. Right. Mm. Uh, much of the cargo which goes or comes into the country comes through passenger flights. Mm -hmm. Right. So, when that started getting impacted, it started mm. getting impacted not only going out of Malaysia, mm. but even the next level of connection started getting impacted. So, air capacity suddenly got shrunk. Mm. So that was the first biggest uh, mm. impact and we could see clearly that cross-border parcels were taking more time mm. and it was a very dynamic situation for us to mm. uh, explain consumers how much more time will the uh, shipments take to uh, get delivered. So it was a very difficult time at yes. that time. So options available were only cargo flights mm. but as many cargo flights go from Malaysia mm -hmm. uh, then uh, and during lockdown not many uh, more cargo flights could be added. Mm -hmm. So what we started doing in case of uh, Malaysia is we uh, have our entity in Singapore. Mm -hmm. We started trucking cross-border goods from here to Singapore and started connecting from there too. Okay. And that helped us in mm -hmm. uh, uh, running <coughs> our uh, whole ecosystem in a bit more, uh, uh, let's say, progressive way rather than, uh, you know, uh, uh, ensuring, telling customers not to send the goods and all. Okay. So we mm -hmm. try to ensure that mm -hmm. the cross-border still sustains. Mm -hmm. Of course, it takes time mm -hmm. because, you know, when the border closed, most people feel flights close. Yes. But what also happens is that 
countries are at different uh, status of lockdown. Mm -hmm. So customs is locked down. Mm. The uh, airport authorities mm. uh, enabling uh, who uh, unload your cargo and all are locked down. Mm. So different things got stuck up at different uh, places. Mm. So that whole chain started getting impacted. So we had to dynamically evolve and see what was the best route to take our goods to destination. Mm. So we had to dynamically evolve into ensuring yes. that we manage the situation. You have to act very swiftly Absolutely. to overcome all these problems. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to, of course, you have been very yeah. resourceful yes. in looking for yeah. the uh, alternative. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And one very important thing that we noticed is, mm. and which is, which is the fundamental in business, mm -hmm. we kept our customers informed, mm. people who use us informed at every uh, stage of change that was happening. Mm -hmm. For example, they could, would know that at which uh, status of working is a destination country when they're sending the cross border goods and mm. they could see oh now the lockdown is open mm. now there's a restriction mm -hmm. they could see that but mm. we had to keep them informed mm. if let's say flights were going down to a particular destination we had to keep them informed mm. because then they could keep their bias informed mm -hmm. i think communication is the second most important thing mm -hmm. than merely managing your business continuity mm. because then your customers also can keep their buyers satisfied and happy yes and that is the second thing that we immediately did when uh, we were in mco mm. transparency was very important mm -hmm. yeah. and certainly uh, mco has caused uh, positive and negative impact yes. uh, on lala move you know in your business and what are the problems you face and how do you overcome those well i mean the positives were, I think, very immediate and very obvious. I mean, when as soon as everything goes on lockdown, the only options you have to get, you know, your essentials is, is via delivery and it's essential services that were permitted by the government, right? Mm. However, what that did on, on, on the, I guess, the negative side of things was it really constrained our, our supply, right? When I say supply, I mean our riders and our drivers because, I mean, it, 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 you, it's very difficult to scale up overnight, mm. right? I'm scaling up takes time. Um, and uh, it takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of manpower, and you have you know teams doing A B work from home, mm -hmm. right? Because once again, you, you you know these were things that you, precautions that we had to take during the time, and so it was very difficult to to scale up the supply side. The one advantage um, I think companies like Lao Move has is the ability to move very fast um, and, and use different technologies, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we we leveraged heavily on things like virtual training, mm -hmm. uh, so. People wanted to join the platform and to to make some extra income, um, especially since you know you couldn't go to work anymore. Mm. A lot of mm -hmm. a lot of people, there there was some retrenchment that went on uh, mm. during during the during the lockdown. Uh, people were able to join the platform online, so they just had to go online, do a training course, complete a quiz, um, and then our team would reach out to them mm. over over the phone to get them to get their uh, accounts activated. Mm. Right? Was was the response overwhelming? Yeah, yeah, very. It was um, the. The scale was, I mean, the, in order to process everyone that came in during that time, and I'm talking even about demand, mm -hmm. right? I'm not talking about, even about the increase in orders, I'm just talking about the increase in people who wanted to join the platform, mm -hmm. you know, to make, a, to make an extra income. Um, and it was quite interesting as well. You would have a lot of grab drivers who would sign up as well because oh. mm -hmm. you could no longer, you know, um, get in a grab car. Yes, right. right. Yeah, right. there's no, no passengers. There was no more car sharing, mm -hmm. right? So car sharing was pretty decimated mm -hmm. during the in the lockdown, I, I'm, I'm happy to know that it's recovering quite a bit now. Mm. Um, but you know, you have all these people who are, who are going in, and we would have probably needed mm. four times the headcount mm. to even manage that that mm. load. You know, um, and, uh, there were a lot of things we had, we had to figure out, like how do we get them, you know, like the, our, our lala bags, you know, on the <laughs> yes. bike, right? So we would literally have a window open, mm. right? So because they couldn't come in, right? So we had to, oh. you know, give these things. We had to check yeah. the temperature, mm. oh, <laughs> window, okay. and the line would go around the building mm. because there were so many people mm -hmm. uh, who, who wanted to come in, and we had to do rush orders, get more bags. Mm. Uh, we had some problems. Uh, there, there was one point uh, getting our, <laughs> our bag. Our we shipped them in from Vietnam, yes. and we get it was stuck in customs in, mm. in Port Klang, and mm. so we had to go to Port Klang and try to figure that out. Mm. I, and, uh, to be fair mm. to the custom agents and clients, they're all very, very helpful. Mm. Um, so, you know, there, there were a lot of friction points along the way, but mm. I think the one advantage um, a company like that, a technology company like Alamuf does is that you're allowed to move very, very fast and you're allowed to be very, very flexible. And, and the ability to be flexible, I think, makes all the difference in um, whether or not you're going to be, be the company that people look to mm. when they think about, okay, are you going to be my solution mm -hmm. uh, for my delivery problem at this particular time because mm -hmm. there are so many alternatives especially mm -hmm. in the market today. Mm -hmm. So facing these uh, disruptions in the supply chain, 
Do you think that in Malaysia we'll set up a more smaller delivery centre uh, to actually support the whole uh, logistic supply chain? Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah. If you ask uh, uh, me, it would. Uh, it's. Uh, I think. Uh, there's no choice, they will have to. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when the lockdown had happened, we were managing 3x the demand with X infrastructure. Mm -hmm. right? And even while the lockdown has been eased off, mm -hmm. volumes have not uh, gone down as much. They are mm -hmm. still yeah. at 2x, between 2 to 3x. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have to manage customer service levels, we have to give a uh, respectable service quality. That requires us to invest in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And for that infrastructure, we, will, we are uh, requiring more depots, more hubs, and more vehicles, mm -hmm. that's that's paramount. So in DHL, we have already started uh, opening up more depots, mm -hmm. and these depots are opening up in more interior parts of mm. uh, Malaysia. Okay. And we are finding entrepreneurs who want to open these depots for mm. us. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we are mm -hmm. finding that. Mm. Uh, for a hub, which is the heart of our whole operation, because we are hub and spoke model, mm -hmm. uh, uh, slightly different from Lala yeah. Move in that way, uh, our hub, we had to increase the capacity three times mm -hmm. because the kind of consumption that was uh, happening in the economy mm -hmm. had to be uh, serviced in a particular transit time. Mm -hmm. So we did that. Mm -hmm. And what we also started doing is uh, we uh, we dynamically started uh, adding more customer service people who could work from home. Mm -hmm. Similar to the driver concept of training them online, mm -hmm. and giving them uh, easy access to mm -hmm. our software application so mm -hmm. that they can take calls from home. Mm -hmm. That helped us in ensuring that customer service support immediately ran them. Mm -hmm. That is something also that's there. Our, mm -hmm. co our call center still has only 20-25% of the people working from our office. Mm -hmm. The rest are still working from home. Mm -hmm. And we are able to deliver even better service levels than uh, before COVID mm -hmm. uh, right now. Mm -hmm. So that investment will be needed both in terms of operational infrastructure or mm -hmm. in terms of customer support infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And what's also happening for uh, logistics companies is as more people are realizing, uh, SMEs are realizing that they would like to sell online, mm. services like of DHL e-commerce solutions have to be accessible to them. Mm. Uh, so e every customer cannot be given pickup because when they're starting the business, they just have maybe one shipment in a week, two shipment in a week, or maybe one shipment in a day, mm. right? But if we can make our services accessible to them, it would be very good for them. So what we started doing is we started opening up more neighborhood stores oh, okay. called mm -hmm. premium reseller outlets. Mm -hmm. These are also led by people who want to take DHL brand to the people mm -hmm. and be part of this logistic story that's happening in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So these premium reseller shops are being owned by people who want to take the DHL brand, put up a reseller shop and enable this whole e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So here is where people who want to send uh, goods, whether C2C or B2C or even B2B, mm -hmm. can start doing through neighborhood DHL stores. Mm -hmm. And this we are expanding across. Mm -hmm. And this is giving more employment opportunity mm -hmm. or people who want to look at alternative modes of business because business scenario has changed, not as much consumption is happening in their earlier businesses. They can look at uh, being part of this new uh, economic surge which is happening, which is happening in logistics. In fact, the latest uh, Bain and uh, Facebook study, which has just come a few days back, mm -hmm. if you see, it, Malaysia has the highest number of digital, uh, con uh, you know, uh, consuming population okay. across various services, yeah. across ASEAN, mm. across ASEAN, mm. which is completely uh, driven by the current pandemic. Mm. We have taken, according to them, a leap five years ahead mm. than what we were before COVID. Mm -hmm. There is a blessing in disguise. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From a company like DHL point of view, we see our plans of 2021 mm. already being realized mm. three months ago. <laughs> okay, right? great. And, uh, which is uh, great. And That's we want the, larger mm. people to be part of the story. Mm. And we want to enable the story. Mm. It, with the adoptions of Industrial 4.0, yeah. Certainly, it will increase our productivity, yeah. and of, of course, now it, it also boosts the e-commerce activities. Yeah. Do you think that our logistics uh, can uh, can actually support the whole advancement of this uh, e-commerce with, with the figures we give now? So it's very exciting, yeah. you know. So, but can this industry, the the logistics industry, support the booming of the uh, uh, e-commerce industry? I personally feel uh, definitely we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. If during the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. the logistics companies who were part of this economy were managing 3x demand with 1x infrastructure mm -hmm. and were able to deliver the goods, I think mm -hmm. that nothing can be uh, better than that mm -hmm. uh, even right now because now the uh, 
scenario is much more ease. We know exactly what norms to work in. Mm. We have room to invest in infrastructure. We have people who can build their infrastructure for us, which was not there earlier. Mm. I think people are definitely ready for it. Mm. We've gone through the tough time. We have gone through the tough time. Mm. I think uh, companies who really want to uh, really make a strong mark, this is the time for them to invest. Mm. And not only invest for right here, right now, mm. but invest for the next one, two year kind of demand which is coming. Mm. And this demand is already on a uh, hyper acceleration mode right now. Mm -hmm. But what is very important for uh, Malaysia uh, logistics companies to realize is when we hear from consumers across ASEAN, Malaysia is the slowest in terms of delivery. Mm. Yes, and when I say delivery, it's not only because of logistics delivery. The whole supply chain, right from the time I bought to the time delivery, mm. uh, Malaysia is uh, right now at the bottom. Mm -hmm. oh, and that's okay. and that's a big opportunity for the whole ecosystem, which enables uh, e-commerce or mm. even deliveries. Now mm. we should not call it e-commerce anymore. We should call yeah. it commerce. Mm. Yeah. We are enabling commerce, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. So we should try to ensure that how we can shrink this time and make it best in class. Mm. This requires strong technology uh, mm. automation mm. in our operating centers, mm. even the right who are uh, uh, taking our shipments and delivering, how we can uh, ensure that life becomes easy so that they can deliver more in the same time so and shipment get delivered within the transit time. Mm. Also it uh, involves a lot of training for people. Mm. Technology can do only as much mm. but like it or not logistics is still a very human intensive business. Yes. Five years down the line if we again have the discussion mm. you would still have a high yeah. human touch component as part of it. Yeah. What is your take uh, yeah. on the, uh, the trend? Uh, of these developments in, in the uh, logistic. I think to add on, 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 on what Anil said, I think he, he's, very, he's right in the sense that we can definitely um, accommodate mm -hmm. yeah, the demand. I think if you look at the way um, other, other more developed countries have done it, I mean, if you look at um, the way Amazon does deliveries now, mm -hmm. I mean, and of course they have the gold standard for, for same day delivery. Mm -hmm. right? yes. um, a lot of the way that they're doing it uh, mm -hmm. focuses so heavily on, you know, technology mm -hmm. and AI and, mm -hmm. and data that if we were to be able to leverage on this, if we were able to collaborate amongst different platforms, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of, let's call it, um, distressed assets or, 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 or vacant supply out there. I mean, any one of a car today, mm -hmm. right, I mean, um, technically can be a delivery person, mm -hmm. right? So I don't think it's, it's, it's a function of a lack of uh, supply in the market is a function of lack of almost education and willingness of, of, of the public to, to try new things and because there's so much, especially for people today in this current situation, there's always some way you can make an extra income in the market uh, by, by just using the things that you already have, you know, mm -hmm. you don't need to go out to buy new things or learn a new skill, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to make an extra income. You can just use what you have currently and there's so many opportunities out there. So especially for Malaysia, I think, um, you know, cell, uh, smartphone proliferation is probably one of the highest <laughs> in, the, in the region, if not the world, I yes, think, you many know. Many people own yeah, two, phones. Two, two phones nowadays, <laughs> right? So it, it, I think we are in a fantastic position mm. to leverage um, this current situation mm. and, and really, really push the envelope mm. on, 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 on where we see uh, this, this country going uh, in, in terms of e-commerce and logistics over the next, mm. you know, five, ten years, for the future. Of all the services provided by Lala Move, yeah. uh, which category has seen the highest growth? Well, um, I think the obvious one is going to be bikes, right? Because bikes are, mm. you know, they're short, they're cheap, they're last mile, they're easy to understand the concept of. I mean, if you've if you've ever had your food delivered, um, mm. then you will have the confidence in, like, mm. okay, what's the difference from having my food delivered? If mm. this guy, mm. who I've never had any contact with before, I'm gonna trust him with my food, mm. what's the difference between trusting him with my, my phone charger, mm. so to speak, or something like that, or my documents? Mm. Now, I mean, we also offer insurance and things like that, so it does give people a bit of you know, ease mm. of mind. Mm. Um, so that's grown about maybe 200%, mm. right? Oh. About two times at least. Um, it's really... A big jump. Yeah, it's a huge mm. jump. So uh, we're, we're, we're very pleased about that. Very nervous in mm. the beginning, but, but <laughs> we're glad it worked out. Um, but the I think the more interesting uh, market really yes. is is the larger vehicle market. You know, mm. things like vans mm -hmm. and lorries. I think mm. in a market today, you see there's not a lot of transparency. Yeah. Um, in in let's say you want to you know move large items or you want to move house or move office and things no. like that. Um, you don't know what. What 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 is the value of this? You know, mm -hmm. I said that we grew what two hundred percent, right? 
uh, for the smaller, for the bikes, uh, bike delivery and cars and stuff like that. For larger vehicles, you probably go about 400, 500 percent mm -hmm. in that same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just because, uh, but that's a lot to do with the fact that the market itself, mm -hmm. we, I, I truly believe, was not equipped really, mm -hmm. not transparent. There, there were too many. Um, uh, uh, there was just too much asymmetric information between the parties, and so now that we've cleared that, or we're trying, we're still trying to clear mm -hmm. that. You know, we're still trying to educate the market mm -hmm. on 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 these larger ser vehicle services that we provide because we think that um, the market should know mm -hmm. that, that there are many many options out there, mm -hmm. and if you give people a good service at a good price point mm -hmm. um, that they didn't know was an option before. Mm -hmm. They'll absolutely use it. Do you have any uh, plans to provide more services in the near future? Yeah, absolutely. I mm. think um, so. Here, what else can you deliver? I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> so it's not just. Um, so when you look at, it's not just the amount of vehicles you have. <laughs> yes. Because you can always keep going, right? You go uh, one ton truck, three ton truck, five ton truck. You know, 10, ten footer, twenty footer, mm. um, and then maybe you go, oh, let's try, <laughs> let's try renting space on a plane or something, and then moving to that. So we're not going to do that. Mm. But um, um, the the more interesting thing is really figuring out what the consumer wants, mm. right? Yes. So if the consumer says, hey. Um, you ha you have lorries, right? But you don't provide wrapping services um, or bubble wrap services for mm. your mm. for your house moves. Mm. So that's a service that you know once we see the demand for, we'll invest in, mm. right? Because you can't just turn it on. You know mm. what I mean? You have to provide the materials, to provide the training, and all mm. these sorts of things. So it's, it's it's a bit of a process. But the idea is to really understand what a consumer is looking for. Mm. The consumer says, hey. Why don't you guys do cross border? Mm. That's something that you know we want to invest in. You know, but in order to do that, mm. you might need to have a base in places like Penang and mm. Johor, or, or if you go to the East Coast, the Rangano and things like that. Mm. So it really there there are lots of opportunities, mm. you know, for for growth. But what's important is understanding what the consumer wants, mm. so that you can. Um, tailor make the service to their to their requirements. You know, you don't just turn things on because you have a feeling. Uh, but I think the consumers are called more concerned about service. You know, how speedy can you deliver my goods? You know? For example, I'm trying to figure out well, how do we cope with situations like uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, <laughs> Valentine's Day. Yeah. You know, everyone try to send yeah. gifts. You know, uh, that I think that will be a real challenge. But that is a lot of there is a lot of potential in this because I think Malaysians are. Uh, has this uh, behavior now yep. that sending grips uh, during this festive season? Our best day mm -hmm. is Valentine's Day. Okay, <laughs> that is the number one day uh, for for us at mm -hmm. least, right? We do two um, x of a normal day on mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and but but like you said, it's about service, right? So the way that at least we do it, mm -hmm. right, is that we we make sure that we are supply ready, mm -hmm. right? So weeks before mm. we are already planning. Mm. You know, we're already getting mm. all riders and drivers mm. to come back on. We have special incentives for the drivers to mm. want to come back on. You know, you do a certain amount of orders, we pay you even more money. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is to me the way that you are able to have a very reliable um, supply mm. well, and at the same time keeping your supply happy. Now we have a general idea of the situation faced by the logistics industry and its future development. Let us look at the government policy design for the SMEs. Do you think that uh, the government should do to upgrade the uh, Malaysia's largest industry? I think that's very important. Mm. We just cannot stay, you know, as it is now. Remain, remaining at the status quo yep. is, is no no, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what do you think that uh, the government should do? Well, I think uh, one of the best things that uh, government can do is always enable uh, uh, business by ensuring all the institutions which are part of government uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, run in a very uh, synchronous way. Mm -hmm. So that information is uh, available at the same level of uh, clarity across all things. Mm -hmm. Where it helps is, 
I think uh, example of the current pandemic disruption mm -hmm. uh, is a great uh, uh, lesson for all of us to learn of how to ensure information should be seamlessly available across all systems for private sector or even a semi-public sector kind of company. Mm -hmm. But even government has similar kind of information available across all the institutions, mm -hmm. then the logistics can flow very seamlessly mm -hmm. and it can flow effortlessly. We can manage disruptions in a business pretty well. Mm -hmm. Like for example, during lockdown, mm -hmm. agencies were at different uh, level of clarity of what is allowed, what is not allowed. Yes. Right? We have learned that lesson. Mm -hmm. Now, if let's say the next disruption comes, are mm -hmm. we ready for ensuring that next time, mm -hmm. all the essential service uh, enablers mm -hmm. can run their uh, services seamlessly so that uh, the whole business ecosystem can thrive on it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the uh, uh, fundamentally the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, second most important thing that's happening is uh, government can support a lot in uh, on the logistics side because what's happening is Malaysia is increasingly being looked mm -hmm. as a place mm -hmm. where multinationals would like to make the fulfillment centers. Mm -hmm. They're exploring it. Okay. Now these fulfillment centers are not mm -hmm. only going to look after the Malaysian domestic demand, mm -hmm. they are also going to look after international cross-border demand for ASEAN countries. Yeah, that the opportunity regional, is yes, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know uh, the uh, AT Kearney study done with the ASEAN uh, governments and all, there is mm -hmm. a clear uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, indication of how mm -hmm. much these economies are integrated with each other. Mm -hmm. If we can provide that great platform in mm -hmm. Malaysia to these companies to set up the cross-border and domestic fulfillment centers over here, mm -hmm. it's going to be a great shot in the arm. Mm -hmm. What that requires is that uh, uh, FTZs which make it very easy for logistics companies to mm. bring sh shipments in and out mm. uh, without uh, uh, losing time. Mm. Because the opportunity of having a fulfillment center in Singapore and moving it to Malaysia mm. requires that transit time should not get impacted. Mm -hmm. So How we are not it? talking about the local fulfillment center but the regional. Yes, mm -hmm. and yes. that same regional can look after domestic also. Mm. Yes. Because company, every company wants mm. to save money. Yes. They would like to bring economies of scale. Mm -hmm. They would like to have hub and spoke model mm -hmm. so that you know they can uh, ensure that they are able to service mm. uh, and compete in the market. Mm. Because much as we would like uh, to attract investment, mm. the company should also see the uh, savings for them. Mm -hmm. So I think this, uh, this is the second most important opportunity that I uh, mm. see uh, in the current uh, scenario mm. and if you've already left three to five years from mm. where we're supposed to be mm. then nothing is better to seize the initiative right now mm. is what I feel still feel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Chen Long, what, what is your suggestions uh, for the government to improve you know the uh, the whole infra for the industry of logistics? Um, and I think that if the government you know wants to help you know businesses um, leverage on this more, the first step is always education. Mm -hmm. The first step, I mean, a lot of people don't even understand really how e-wallets work, you mm -hmm. know, and things like that. A lot of people still find um, platforms too complicated, especially in the older generation and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, or they, there's just a fear of trying, right? Uh, because right now, if you if you look at, at least for, for Lala Move, like the infrastructure for Platform logistics, mm -hmm. online logistics is, is, is kind of set up already. You know, I mean, if there's anything else that you want, you tell us and we will work on building it for you. You know what I mean? So it's also, um, I think, a very important symbiotic relationship that we want to have with the government. You know, mm -hmm. if the government wants us to go out and give, you know, little talks and uh, with, with, with certain communities and individuals and how they can leverage. On logistics, like we don't want to rely solely on the government. We want to work with the government. Mm. You know, we want to be yes. there. Be like, okay, this is how mm -hmm. um, it, we can help. This is how we can lower your costs. We, this is how we can increase your reach. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of companies are trying to do. We're working with Maybank right now, and, and they're enabling a lot of local businesses. You know, to to, to come on a platform, and we just provide the last month delivery. You know, mm -hmm. so I think education on, on on logistics and education on our platforms, education in e-commerce is probably the, 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 the most important thing. We, we see the mushrooming of uh, where many smaller logistics company uh, after the MCO. And you know, as an established uh, logistics company, you have any suggestion or tips for our smaller logistics company, not only to survive through this tough period, but the post-pandemic period. I think uh, I uh, always believe uh, you know there's never a better time for logistics than now. Mm -hmm. You know, if anybody is in this business, I think the Great the natural surge itself will take care of them. Mm -hmm. How well they ride the surge and how well they're ready for the demand coming their way, so that the experience mm -hmm. is uh, uh, mm -hmm. up to what uh, the uh, buyers want to 
uh, leverage, mm -hmm. right? I think it's completely left up to them. Mm -hmm. But what I would recommend is the uh, opportunities right up there. Mm -hmm. Earlier, the categories that most of the people used to buy online were some services, mm -hmm. which everybody obviously knows of, and mm -hmm. the electronic fashion item. But now what you see is more grocery items, mm -hmm. more dry uh, uh, groceries, which can easily be transported, and fresh grocery. Mm -hmm. So opportunities have really widened. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. you want to play and leverage yourself, I think, is uh, uh, you know, uh, each and every uh, you know entity's own USP. They have to decide that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I uh, personally believe and which I always share is, uh, there are a lot of technologies which are now coming, and technology has become such a great enabler for businesses today that they can leapfrog through the incumbents mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know mm -hmm. take a lot of market share. Mm -hmm. So uh, my recommendation to them is mm -hmm. start, uh, start quickly. Mm. Fail quickly, mm -hmm. learn quickly, mm -hmm. and get up again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best way. Don't mm -hmm. wait for the ideal uh, scenario to be there on paper and then you know hit the market because mm -hmm. you uh, they might just lose the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in current economy, you'll also find that there's so many things that enable logistics business. Mm -hmm are easily available on a SaaS model mm -hmm. for yeah. them to start leveraging yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And everything can easily be integrated into whether it's a mm -hmm. seller mm -hmm. or whether you want to uh, uh, have a C2C kind of a seller also who's an individual mm -hmm. to use the service so mm -hmm. seamlessly uh, available. Mm -hmm. Just plug and play and ensure you maintain, uh, run the back end well. Yeah. I think that's what I would recommend. Yeah. yeah. Anything from you, Shannon? Personally, I think that it's, 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 it's difficult. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that a lot of these uh, players come on board and because it is so easy to start, you know, as I know was mentioning, uh, because all the you know the soft a lot of the software is pre-built, you mm -hmm. know, it's like plug and play. You just I want to do this and this and this and this. I pay mm -hmm. a certain amount of money, and let's go, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but it is uh, quite difficult, you know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. And and the most difficult usually is uh, is always the human component of it. It is the training. It is the customer support. It is what do you do when you have a sometimes an irrational consumer, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, who's you know going crazy over something. Um, and so, if you can figure out the technology, mm -hmm. right, uh, and it's not too difficult nowadays. But my advice to any logistics uh, competitor would be to make sure that you put your customers first. And when I say customers, uh, people have this misconception because I'm in a I'm in a platform business. Mm -hmm. I don't have any assets aside mm -hmm. from the building we rent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any cars or bikes or lorries. I don't. We don't hire any full-time riders and drivers. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, gives us the flexibility. Gives them the flexibility as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, because of that, we have. We don't just have the user who placed the order as the customer. We have the drivers and the riders. They are also a customer. Mm -hmm. If you don't provide them a good service, they leave. They go somewhere else, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So it's it's a very delicate balance, you know. Um, it's understanding what both customers and consumers, uh, what their wants and needs are, and making sure that both sides of the, of the supply and demand are happy. And if you can figure that out, I think in almost any business, you'll be fine, whether it's logistics or otherwise, mm -hmm. right? So that, so I guess that's that's the only advice I would yeah. really give. So. Uh, what we personally uh, see mm -hmm. is uh, from a, a DHL point of view, mm -hmm. uh, if you see where Malaysia is in states of evolution from an online point of view, the penetration as a percentage of retail is only about 5 to 6%, mm -hmm. which is what people have uh, uh, documented in various researches. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe it's higher than that. It's mm -hmm. something about 7 to 8% because many of the studies don't capture the social commerce part, which is mm -hmm. really booming and accelerating and it's not uh, audited and data mm -hmm. captured anywhere. Mm -hmm. That part is really booming. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say over here is if you uh, take Malaysia versus matured e-commerce markets like China, mm -hmm. which is already a 31 to 32 percent kind of a penetration retail, mm -hmm. or something like US, which is 17 percent, or even uh, not too far away from here, South Korea, mm -hmm. uh, it's about 25 percent in terms of penetration. Mm -hmm. The the amount of boom that's going to uh, come is stupendous. O opportunity is going to be huge. Now, if you see from these markets, logistics is not only about last mile delivery. Mm -hmm. There are many things which are components of it. Mm -hmm. For example, if you see Japan, South Korea and all, mm -hmm. there are many companies who run small fulfillment centers only for SMEs. Mm -hmm. You run the front end, we do the back end for you. Mm -hmm. And they then plug and play with various logistics service providers. Mm -hmm. That's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a great opportunity in Malaysia too. Why can't Malaysia have fulfillment centers mm -hmm. where SMEs and all of different kinds have different kind of fulfillment centers which give different kind of services. Some very frugal, mm -hmm. means affordable, mm -hmm. some with value adds, 
and some with high and with high level of tech enablement with sales channel management order management even including a procurement and all mm. there is breadth of opportunity which is going to come in the next 5 to 10 years mm -hmm. and logistics that's what i'm trying to say is not only about last mile delivery yeah. mm -hmm. it's a Absolutely. much bigger thing mm -hmm. and there are many other opportunity which will uh, come if we learn from the developed economy mm -hmm. so the right uh, you know it's writing is on the wall mm -hmm. and just we have to ensure that you know we uh, uh, you know so these companies evolve and choose the space they want to play in yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, seize the opportunity mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah you're actually very optimistic about the uh, Developments of the yes. logistics yeah. industry and also the Malaysian economy. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. very great. optimistic. That's great. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So faced with the pandemic, uh, an unprecedented uh, pandemic, we have seen that the how the logistics industry had demonstrated had demonstrated how the the thing on the speed to adapt to the new stations, be agile, be flexible, and be optimistic. And that is a story from the logistics industry. So thank you, Anil and Shenlong, you for your much. valuable time and very insightful views in, in the not only the logistics industry but also the development of Malaysia's economy. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for having us.